you know, I didn't want to have to record this. You know, I was hoping the next time I'd be here, we'd be talking about positivity and talking about a competent team and a team that figured it out. Uh, that is not the case at all. Uh, welcome back to Dotnet Phillies. I I just want to preface this and say I have no notes on this series other than my blind on and unadulterating rage for this team right now. Um, uh, I will be speaking from the heart. I will be speaking with passion, with pain. You know, usually I do, but with some guidance there. But right today, here I gotta fix this. Damn it! But today, nope. I'm not lighting the candle either. I feel like it might be a bad omen. It tried to be a good omen. Now it's a bad omen. So a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts there. So headlines. Uh, we have Derek Hall reported to AAA. So that's good that we're getting him back. Uh, Christian Pache began a rehab in low A, which is huge. Jose Alvarado is beginning a rehab assignment, which is ginormous. Uh, we had Alec Bohm headed to the IL, and Drew Ellis uh, was called up, and he was pinched hit yesterday in a big spot. I don't know. I don't get it. He's playing tonight, but uh, Drew Ellis was called up. Uh, they they said it's not anything severe. It's not anything to be too too worried about, which is which is good because I think the last thing that this team needs is more injuries, and so I believe that's it. Uh, for updates, yeah. So let's let's dive right into it. I have the three box scores pulled up, including Baseball Reference. If I want to pull up receipts, which I do, so I look like a ba- smart baseball person. This. There's like a little gap where like my table thing sits and it was wobbling and it was annoying me. So, uh, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Game one. You, well, okay. Let me back up a little bit before we get into game one. This Phillies team right now is in a tailspin. I don't, you, you always Okay, let me let me start over. This this team is going down the drain very quickly, and it's easy to blame the people in charge. Dave Dombrowski, Sam Fold, Middleton, Rob Thompson, Chris Long, um, Caleb Cotham. It's easy to blame those guys, but this isn't the first year that this has happened. This isn't the first year that this team has been together and there's some issues and they're trying to figure out what the root cause of it is. I believe it is a personnel issue. We saw what this team is capable of, which makes this start to this season, a third of the way season, this third of the season, so infuriating because we know how good this team can be and they're just not performing. You know, you 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 pay a guy three hundred million dollars, and you know he has a uh, six fifty one OPS right now. You you have a guy in in uh, you know Schwarber who's hitting one sixty three right now. The inconsistencies are through the roof, and it's and it's prevalent because they're not getting the job done. And what gets me is, listen, I love Rob Thompson. I think the people who are saying you should be fired are, are stupid. I think that is a very, very rash thing to do with Rob Thompson. He's proven that he's a very good manager. And again, it's not his fault his players aren't hitting with runners in scoring position. But here's an idea, Rob. Maybe don't roll out the same lineup you have who has shown they can't perform. Maybe switch up the lineup. He did tonight, but... Come on. You know, you're rolling out Stott, Turner, Casty, And we won't, we'll get to, we'll get to that first game and the stupidity of that. But you're rolling out Stott, Turner, Harper, Casty, Schwarber, Riamuto, Marsh, Clemens, and Sosa almost every given night. And it's not working. And it hasn't worked. Fix it. You have the ability and the flexibility to switch up this lineup to get runs producing, to get guys on in different situations. 
Bat Brandon Marsh, for God's sakes. He's tearing the cover off the ball right now. You got to execute that. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't. I mean, I'm hoping Schwarber turns it around. It's June, and we all know what he does in June. You know, you hope for that. Turner, he's hitting 236 right now. Glad we gave you $30 million, $300 million, Trey. It's a disaster. And I don't know who to blame. I don't know who to point the finger at other than themselves. The only guys who are stepping up and performing at a consistent level are Nick Castellanos and Bryce Harper on the offensive side. I mentioned Cody Clemens is hitting the ball very well. He's hitting 268 with an 812 OPS right now. You're riding the hot hand with him. Sosa's cooled down. Real Muto ain't doing the job. Herner is a lost cause. Stott, I, I give him credit. Stott's always, no matter what, even when he's slumping, he's working good at bats. But at some point, and I, Schwarber had allegedly had a, a, clo- a players-only meeting behind closed doors. But at some point, players need to take responsibility. And yeah, you have Trey Turner saying, I would have booed me too. I would do this. I would do that. You're too good of a hitter to be hitting 236 right now. You are getting paid like a guy who hits 300 with 20 bombs. I don't know what happened with Trey Turner who for years has been one of the best fastball hitters in the league. And now he all of a sudden can't hit him. He's chasing sliders away, standing close to the plate, and he always swings at the ball in on his hands towards his head. I don't understand it. Stott, I have nothing bad to say about Bryson Stott. Harper, nothing. Castellanos, gold glove season. Schwarber, he's still getting on. People are like, oh, they should trade Kyle Schwarber. No, 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 no. We're not trading Kyle Schwarber. He's too good to turn it around, to not turn it around. And he's he showed us that last year. Terrible start. People were calling for his head, and then he went off and did what he did. I'm holding out hope for Kyle Schwarber to turn around. JT's streaky. We know about JT by now. Like, I mentioned Clemens. I'm Sosa's cooled down, but what's the alternative? Drew Ellis? Josh Harrison? I'd rather see Garrett Stubbs playing third base right now. He did it in WBC, which apparently Trey Turner just... I want to say something, but this is a PG podcast. He did something in the WBC, and now he's zapped of everything. And I don't know who to blame here. You know, is it a leadership thing? Are you missing Reese that much? Was Reese was Reese the glue that held this entire team together? Because seemingly he was. You know, I love Reese. I've said, to, I've criticized him, but what player haven't I criticized? But I'm sitting here right now on June 2nd saying, Reese Hoskins... His injury might have been the worst thing that happened to this team. Yes, it was bad, but I thought they had the right pieces in place to just skate by. And they clearly haven't because there's no voice in that. There's no voice in that leadership role. You know, I I don't think Harper's that type of guy. Yes, you look at him as the leader, but he's not the leader. You know, like he's the guy who takes care of business, can carry the team, but he's not the leader. I think Reese Hoskins is. Kyle Schwarber is. You know, I'm not... And this isn't a a, a dish on Bryce Harper at all. It's not indicative of his character at all. I love Bryce Harper. He's one of my favorite players in the entire league. But he's not, like... I don't know how to describe it. You need... I don't know what you're doing here. You know, you, you, you... and, you know, I look at the front office. Why aren't you making moves? There's wire change. There's, excuse me, there's people who are DFA'd. There's people who are this, people. And yes, obviously Dylan Covey was a DFA-er, and we picked him up. And look how that blew up in our face. Shocking. But why isn't Jesus Aguilar on this team at this point, especially with the injury to Alec Bohm? Even if he's on the team for two weeks, Play him against lefties. He's hitting 290 against lefties this year. 
And yes, I understand he was let go from the Oakland A's, but he has value against left-handed hitters. You want to platoon Cody Clemens against righties and Jesus Aguilar against righties. Or excuse me. Cody Clemens against le- righties, Jesus Aguilar against lefties. It's that easy. Sign him. Go out, get him. There's no urgency in the front office. And obviously, I don't work in the front office. I don't know what goes on and, and who does what and this and that and that. But for God's sakes, what are we doing? There is no urgency with this team. I feel like every time Dave Dombrowski gets up there, he's saying like, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Now's the time to figure it out, dude. You need a fifth starter. You're a third of the way through the season, and there is no fifth starter on the team who's supposed to be competing for the National League Championship again like they did last year. I I don't know what you do. Give Griff McGarry a shot, for God's sakes. I can't sit through another bullpen game. I'm going to have to on tomorrow. I don't want to have to sit through another Dylan Covey start. But I'm, I might have to. Because Dave's sitting around, sitting on his hands. I know he sucks, but Madison Bumgarner, or, or, or I don't know, somebody, somebody's out there. You can't tax your bullpen because the starters have sucked too. You can't tax your bullpen one day and then say, oh, hey, Nola, go give us seven. Yeah, he'll give you six innings and five runs. And then, and then you have a tax bullpen. You can't keep doing this. It's fine when it's a week. And, you know, you, you push back a start or something. But it's every single week there's a bullpen game. There's a bullpen game. This Phillies bullpen is get Anyway, this Phillies bullpen is gassed. And we are at June 2nd. I don't know. Just, like... Get off! I'm get, I'm about to curse. Get off your ass, Dave, and figure it out. You can't keep expecting this team to do what they did last year. Different schedule, different players, different everything, different pitchers. You can't keep expecting this team to turn around and go on the run like they did. I hope it happens for my sanity, for everybody watching sanity. I hope it turns around. But this, it feels like this front office is saying, oh, they'll turn around. They'll turn around. What if they don't? What if they go 80 and 82 this year? And then what? What's your answer to that then, huh? You, you let Nola walk by. See it. Don't let your door hit you on the way out. He's giving you nothing. Zach Wheeler's turning the corner, thank God. Walker, same thing. Ranger pitched an excellent game in the first game against the Mets. We don't have a fit starter, so you, you can't blame anybody there. In order for, for the Phillies to really be competent, and there was a rumor today going around that, that the Guardians are shopping Shane Bieber, you need to go get him. One of Bieber, Dylan Cease. I don't want Giolito, but I take him too. And you can probably get Cease or Giolito really cheap. You know, it'll probably cost you one of Abel or, or McGarry, but add in another prospect and, and they're yours. That White Sox front office is extremely incompetent. You could swindle the hell out of them. You just need to get on the phone. Make calls. Look at who's getting released. Look through minor league systems. Grab a guy. It's... I'm not going to sit here and say it's not that hard. But there's glaring issues right now. And yes, injuries happen in a baseball season. And I felt like this Phillies team going into this season was built for injuries but built for a couple weeks, not for a year, you know? I just don't know what to say at this point. I, I don't know what happens if one of our starters get hurt. I, I don't. Be, I, you know, you're relying on these guys to be perfect, and I feel like that there's an immense amount of pressure on them because they know a bullpen game's coming, and they feel like they have to be perfect in everything. And I feel like this whole team feels like they need to be perfect. And they don't. You're professional players. You're professional big leaguers. You need to hunker down, dial it back, take it one pitch at a time, one step at a time. Stop trying to be the hero every night. You know, I still think that win against the Diamondbacks was the cleanest, most 
professional baseball win we've seen all year. And you know what they did? They strung together hits. They didn't try to be the hero. They simplified things. They played smart baseball, something that I thought this team was going to get over, and they haven't. They're running into outs. They're, they're, uh, they're stealing when you're down a run and you lead off the inning with a walk in the first game. JT steals second and gets thrown out. Poof, there goes any rally. You need to trust your guys who are coming up. You know? At that time, you have Boehm up, who has been your RBI guy all year. And I, excuse me, I need to, just give me one second. I do apologize. My brother called me, so I had to make sure everything was okay. Where was I? Uh, I forget now. But yeah, this series was brutal. This season has been brutal. You need to figure it out, and soon. And I feel like that's also creeping into their head a little bit, saying like, oh my God, like we're in June now. We haven't turned around. We got to go, go, go. Deep breaths. You know, as bad as this team has been so far and as bad as everything has been, they're only a couple games out of the wild card spot. They're still very much in this. You know, it's the Braves, the Dodgers, the D-backs, and then everybody else. This series coming up against the Nationals is a get-right series for the Phillies. Um, and you need the sweep. I'm, I'm sorry, you need to. Uh, I don't know what else to say. You did great against them last year. For we, oh God, I forgot about, I forgot about my, my bit thing. Uh, my three relievers uh, to, to draw back on. Let me pull up the, we're going to do this live. I have, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, before we do that, let me get into the, the, I'm all over the place. I was extremely unprepared. I, it's been a crazy week. Um, for me, I, I've been back and forth with work and seeing Ashlyn and, and that, you know, speaking of Ashlyn, shout out to Ashlyn. Um, you want to know how bad this Phillies team is? Even she knows how bad the Phillies are and she hates the Phillies, not hates them, but like hates watching baseball. And even she knows how bad they've been. Uh, let me just pick. All right, we'll pick from that list in a minute. I, I came completely, I came out guns a blazing because I wanted to get this up uh, because it was should have came out yesterday, but I worked and then I went. It was a crazy time, so I'm doing it now. So uh, first game, they lose 2-0. There was no approach against Kodai Senga. Um, the, the positive of this game, Ranger Suarez, six and two-thirds, five hits, two earned runs, two walks, four Ks, looked like himself. Look like a guy we can rely on and look like a ranger, which is huge. Uh, because it's been a disaster so far for Ranger this year, but this was a step in the right direction for him. Um, I think he's going to produce, or excuse me, I think he's going to look uh, really, really good uh, from here on out. I hope I need it for my mental sanity and everything. I need it. I need him to be good. Um and then you had Brogdon uh, pitch a third of an inning, and then Junior Marte, who's been actually pitching the ball extremely well, um, which uh, my take at the beginning of the year looks pretty good right now. I'm sure he's going to have like a blow up tonight because that's just what happens here. But yeah, there was no approach against Kodai Senga. They couldn't lay off the ghost fork. Uh, they were just doing stupid things. They didn't re reach first base once. Or excuse me, they didn't reach first, second base once this entire game. So a lot of positivity there. Uh, game two, they lost. That's game two. My tabs got confused. Uh, they lost four to one against uh, Carlos Carrasco, who has like he went had like a six ERA coming into this game. Couldn't figure it out. Nola was an absolute joke again, to no one's surprise. Um, so basically, you know, you get to, uh, you get to the, the third inning, uh, Edmundo hits a solo home run to make it one, nothing. Awesome. Also, I just want to say 
Okay, we'll we'll get to him in a second because I have hatred. I have hatred for the entire Mets organization, but specifically like three people, and the one person is on this list. So we'll get to him. So you had Mundo sing or hits a solo home run, and then um, so the Phillies go up. What does Aaron Nola do? Aaron Nola did what Aaron Nola does best, uh, which was give it right back almost immediately to Mark Hanna. Let me run that back. Mark Hanna. Who hasn't hit a home run since like April, and he had two in this series. And you walk Daniel Vogelbach, who sucks, who stinks, gives it right back. Two to one, Mets. Uh, and then Mark Hanna again. What is, he killed us in this series, and he sucked all year. And Nola, I just don't know what to, to say about Aaron Nola. He's been a disaster this year. I, 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 I'm not giving him, I'm not giving him any amount of money that he wants. He wants two hundred million dollars. Get the hell out of here. I'm not. You're not getting that right now. You have a four seven ERA for God's sakes. What are you doing? You're supposed to be the ace of this staff, and you have let us down time and time and time again in back to back games against division rivals. You're a joke. You're an absolute joke. You are the worst, best pitcher I've ever seen. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know how you fix him. I don't know if it's pitch mix. I don't know. I don't know what to say about Aaron Nola because he's been a disaster this year. He's one of the main reasons we're losing. Not main, but he's one of the reasons we're losing so many games. It's because he's supposed to be a stopper. And what isn't he doing? Stopping. You know, when you, when you roll Aaron Nola out, you just chalk him in for four runs. He's a, he's a low-end three at this point. That, I mean, I, I'm not giving him the amount of money he wants. If we do re-sign him, his, his, his value is going down. He should have signed at the beginning of the year, bud. Because now you're probably eating that contract. You're probably not even going to get anywhere close. Unless he goes on a run in June where he has like a sub-1 ERA. You're getting none of that money, man. And yes, as the warmer weather gets going, Nola starts to kick it up. But you were in Atlanta, which is hot, and you suck there. You went to New York, and it was a beautiful day, and you suck there. So, so w- what part of me is giving you the benefit of the doubt here? Because I, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, Sir Anthony also, you know, continues his his good stretch right now. And again, Andrew Vasquez has been the most valuable one of the most valuable pitchers on this Phillies team um, pitching to a one, four ERA right now in like 25 plus innings. He's been huge for this team. He's consistent. He just goes out, pump strikes. And I'm very happy that he's a Philly. We then get to this game, uh, which is game three, the finale. Finale. Phillies lose, obviously four to two. Uh, old man Scherzer was able to shut them down. Uh, and it was just so the the scoring got started with uh you know Trey Turner actually doing stuff productively uh stole third uh, and then there was throwing a- error by Francisco Alvarez uh, which allowed Turner to score and then Castellanos had a sack fly that was it for scoring for the Phils. Uh, you then you had Jeff McNeil who is a guy that I hate I want to punch him right in the face. Like I, everybody, Brandon Nimmo, yeah. Pete Alonzo, yeah. Jeff McNeil, yeah. all of them. I hate all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. Um, and then Mark Canna again, Mark Canna, who sucks. Another home run on a ball, mind you, that was right down the middle. The ball was right down the middle. Hard to get guys out when you pitch them right down the middle. Unless it's Javi Baez. He'll, he'll swing at anything. But, yeah, Mark Cano with a homer. And then uh, Mark Vientos had a sack fly. And that was it for scoring. And then uh, an interesting note from this um, was uh, Taiwan Walker was removed after four innings. He said he felt a little discomfort, but uh, since – said he's fine like we're all good and he was pitching very well like he was four innings three runs like he easily could have gone maybe two more 
maybe one more, but still it's a good, very good five for three. That's not bad. Uh, you have Matt Strom with a couple of, uh, with a couple innings, then uh, Gregory Soto and Craig Kimbrell both uh, to close out the pitching for the Phillies, and it was and that's all she wrote. It was a disaster of a series. I said what I wanted to say. Uh, we will now get to everybody's favorite segment: random Phillies of the thing, uh, random Phillies to reminisce on. And I think the first one I'm bringing up, where is he on my list? We're bringing up. Austin Davis. How does that name sound to you? So Austin Davis. Jesus, he has been. Oh my God, he's still in the big leagues. No, that's 2022. Never mind. So Austin Davis was a Phillies farmhand. He uh he was drafted in the 12th round of the 2014 MLB draft. He was a big lefty, spent. Uh, 2018 and 2019 and 2020 with the Phillies before being designated for assignment. And in those years with the Philadelphia Phillies, he, this will load. Why is my computer so slow? Come on. Come on. Baseball reference is being annoying right now. Oh, it's nothing's working right now. Come on. Uh, give me a second here. Sorry. I don't know what's going on with my internet right now. It's being buggy. Okay. So in those three years with the Phillies, <laughs> he pitched in 55 games, 62 innings, uh, 68 hits, 39 earned runs, 67 strikeouts to the tune of a 5-6-6 ERA. Not too good. He's since then spent time with the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Boston Red Sox, and the Minnesota Twins. Uh, and he has not been seen from since uh, since then. Let me see. Is he currently signed by any big league team? Give me one sec. I know. I, I apologize. I should, uh, I should have this stuff ready, but he has a baseball picture. He... He is in the Astros organization currently. Um, but yes, he hasn't been heard from. He hasn't pitched in big league games since 2022. Uh, and in those years since leaving the Phillies, uh, in uh, with the Pirates, let me unclick that and go to why. Uh, God, baseball reference is really screwing me right now. I do apologize. All right. Oh God, nothing's working right now. But he sucks. He has a career five six one ERA. He is just terrible. He was terrible for the Phillies. Every time we would bring him in, it would be like waving the flag for God's sakes. Uh, and um, it was terrible. And I I hated all of it. Uh, we then get to a very interesting player who. Honestly, it frustrates me that he's doing very well for himself, and that player would be Eniel De Los Santos, uh, who was picked in the... Why is this not going on? All right, never mind. Well, not never mind, but it's being weird with me. Um, So Eniel... Uh, cleverly nicknamed Everyday Aniel because he would go out there and throw like every single day uh, if the Phillies were down. Uh, so in 2018, he spent, you know, 2018 to 2021 with the Phillies until he was designated for assignment and then also shipped off to the Pittsburgh Pirates, similar to Austin Davis. That was not by design, I promise. Um, but uh, in those games, he pitched in 45 games, 65 in a third inning, 75 hits, 44 earned runs, 72 strikeouts uh, to the tune of a 606 ERA. But here's where it gets interesting with Eniel De Los Santos. He is he spends 2021 with the Pittsburgh Pirates and has a uh, 491 ERA in seven and a third innings. So he didn't spend a lot of time there. Um, and then he goes to the Cleveland Guardians in 2022. And it 
frustrates me that, I mean, obviously you go to Cleveland, you're a pitching machine. That's where pitchers go to figure stuff out. Cleveland is a wagon of a team when it comes to pitching. You know, you had it back in the day, you had, you know, Corey Kluber, uh, Trevor Bauer, Mike Clevenger, Shane Bieber, um, uh, Zach Plesak, uh, who's over there, uh, Mackenzie, no, no, he had, um, Tristan McKenzie, uh, who's the other guy? Um, there's one more that I'm forgetting. But they, they just pump these guys out. Uh, but he goes to the Guardians, and in 2022, and including this year, in 2023, he's thrown 74 in a third innings, 51 hits, 22 run runs, to the tune of a 2.66 ERA. His strikeouts are up. So I'm happy for the guy. You know, he's he figured something out. I wish it was with the Phillies. Because he, we, Jesus, we could use him right now, but yeah, there, there, here lies Eniel De Los Santos. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'm looking at my list right now. Oh, that's a deep cut right there. All right, let's let me check him off. Let me check him off. All right, let me. Is he even still in the league anymore? No, he's not. Ah! My next and final player of this segment goes to Reggie McLean of the 2020 bullpen infamy. Uh, he only spent one year, two years in baseball, one year in Seattle, one year in Philly, and he was bad both years. Um, I talked myself into Reggie McLean during the 2022. Uh, I did a podcast back then, and I talked myself into Reggie McLean. Uh, you know, Reggie and his statistics with the Phils went five and a third, uh, a one earned run, or excuse me, three earned runs to two and a five six five oh six ERA. Um, I don't believe he's in the league anymore, or he hasn't. He at least hasn't pitched since 2020. Um, let me see if he's in a uh, in an organization somewhere because I remember he was with the Yankees. No, he's currently a free agent. He's thirty years old, so I do believe that that was the last we we will see of of uh, Mr. McLean, and thus concludes another trip down memory lane, talking about the awful Phillies relievers that we've had over the years. Um, and now we'll look forward to the national series sweep for the love of God and all that is holy. Make me believe in you again. Sweep them for the love of God. They stink. They have scrappy players. They have something. Their rotation actually isn't a train wreck this year, but figure it out. Please, God, figure it out. I'm begging you. <sighs> anyway, I'll be back on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching, and I appreciate the support that I've been getting. But I will be back on Sunday. I apologize for burping. Back on Sunday. <sighs> Talking about a Philly sweep. Let's go.